Hey, I'm uh, in Cottonwood Park right now in a place called Hilldale, Utah and Colorado City, Arizona. It's uh, a place that they refer to as the Crick. It's where the fundamentalist Latter-day Saint Church has been operating for well over a hundred years uh, with one prophet after another leading this uh, rebellious kind of breakaway group from the Mormon Church in Utah, the Salt Lake City based uh, LDS Church. They've been operating here under the rules of polygamy and authoritarian leadership um, that they say is the more accurate and more appropriate uh, way to practice the revelation of Joseph Smith and uh, the early Mormon faith because they feel that the Salt Lake community left the truths of of Mormonism and the truths of Joseph Smith when they abandoned polygamy in 1890 and stopped practicing it uh, in order to be accepted by the United States. But here in this area, right on the state line of Arizona and Utah, they practiced their religion pretty much unobserved by most people because they were just a breakaway group and uh, they were pretty insignificant. But up until this time, this is a town of about eight to 10,000 people under the rule and reign of the infamous prophet Warren Jeffs. This park, literally, that I'm standing in was dedicated as a, 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 an example of the failure of law enforcement to stop their way of life, to stop their polygamy. You can see the stone behind me. It's a stone that is dedicated to Uncle Roy. Uncle Roy was Roy Johnson, who was the prophet before Rulon Jeffs, who then was succeeded by his son, Warren Jeff, who is now in prison for sex trafficking and marrying off young women uh, to older men in polygamous marriages. Uh, but this park and this uh, stone is really a dedication to the fact that the law enforcement of Arizona raided this community in 1953, took all the men away uh, because they were violating the laws of marriage uh, and left all these polygamous wives and all their many children to fend for themselves. But eventually um, they were allowed to return and their families were united. And they saw this as a great victory from God that he protected their families and they dedicated this park to that, uh, to that uh, failure of law enforcement to stop them from doing what they knew God wanted them to do. This place is really kind of otherworldly. It's remarkable to, uh, to, uh, to tell you the story of what's happening here now through the work of uh, Glenn Jones and his wife um, and the work of the Dream Center. We're gonna share about that today. This building over to my left is the former meeting house of the FLDS religion under Warren Jeffs. This was a massive gathering place for the FLDS community. They would meet here for their Sunday worship. Literally eight to 10,000 people uh, can fill up this major religious hall and they would come to listen to their prophet Warren Jeffs speak to them and teach them about various things that he wanted to teach them about. You can see this little garage that we're coming up to. I was told that this is where Warren Jeff's vehicle would pull in. The garage would go up, his car would go in, the garage would go down, and there's a door on the inside there that brings him into the front part of the meeting house, the platform where he would actually teach and instruct and give prophetic utterances. And uh, then his car would just take him back out. So this, this massive building, which is uh, now completely you know, empty and no one can go in it. Uh, it's owned by the trust that exists down here. And uh, it's gonna ultimately be turned into a community center. That's what they hope that they can do with it. But uh, it's just an example of the, f the fact that once upon a time, Warren Jeffs and the FLDS Church ruled this entire community, but now it's all falling apart. And the sin and the evil of this religion has been crippled to the point that this place that was once the centerpiece of their religious expression is now empty, vacant, falling apart, and not, uh, not even in use right now. You can see the perimeter wall is somewhat unfinished in different places. And uh, it's just an amazing testimony that things that are built on a shaky foundation sooner or later will fall apart.
So here in this place, this food bank, the Dream Center really puts hands and feet to their mission to love people in Jesus' name. Uh, here in this place, they distribute food uh, twice a week to the community here in Hilldale and uh, Colorado City. And Glenn tells me that about 50% of the citizens of this area, the community, come here for food assistance each and every week. And right now, because of the coronavirus, they can't come in and collect their food like normal. They have to literally drive through this whole uh, structure of, of coming up to the to the front gate here of the of the food bank and then having the food brought to them and, and then driving away. And it's an amazing example of Glenn and Jenna and the staff of the Dream Center uh, loving people unconditionally in Jesus' name by meeting their material needs. And the resources of this food bank are first rate. Uh, a lot of the people who have lived here have known uh, a lot of poverty, a lot of shame, a lot of uh, um, uh, just hardship would be a, a great word to define this community. Even if you come down here and check it out for yourself, you'll see that this place just looks otherworldly, uh, like a place that has been abandoned or forgotten. But here at the, at the food bank, here through the Dream Center organization, they are showing that when you want to uh, share the love of Christ with someone, to share the love of Jesus with someone, you have to begin by meeting their needs and getting them to see that you really do care and that you are willing to love them unconditionally. That's what's happening here. Glenn and Jenna have been here for uh, over five years and they have built a relationship with most everyone in this community and even people that don't appreciate what they stand for appreciate who they are and what they do for the people here. So it's really an amazing place to be today and to check it out and to share it with you.